Hello YouTube and welcome to episodes 5 and 6 in the Pantheon Stocking Reaction Series. Uh, just going to jump straight in after a little recap today, so straight to the episodes. Let's go. So last episode, I kind of watched two episodes. Uh, there was a skit around Panty eating stockings pudding, and then they had kind of a sibling rivalry thing going on, and then they learned to love each other in the end. It was very sweet. Uh, that was okay. It was fine. Then the next skit in that episode was the dick joke skit, which uh, it was like the beaches of Normandy, but for semen. And I didn't like that one. <laughs> so then the next episode, which I thought was a little bit better, uh, there was a skit around stocking getting fat because of that one cake that kind of expanded, had the bacteria or whatever. I thought that one was pretty good, pretty funny. Good visual jokes, good animation. Uh, and then the next skit was called High School Nudical. And then there was the fabulous guy that went around eating underwear, but then he didn't want to eat the garbage underwear. <laughs> that one was pretty good too. Tickled my fancy anyway. Uh, predictions going forward? Mate, I've got no clue. <laughs> I got no clue what they got in store for me, so we're gonna we're gonna say. Uh, just some show stuff before we jump right in. If you like the video, like the video. If you like the video and want to see more, uh, subscribe to the channel. Comment below anything you thought about the episode, anything I could do to improve my presentation, or anything at all that you want to say. Really, comment below. And I'm doing follow for follow on Twitter. So if you follow me on Twitter, I'll follow you back. I'll retweet your stuff, do all that kind of jazz. It'll be sick. Radio, just going to jump right into the first episode, episode five. Radio, have episode five up here ready to go. Uh, let me pop that up on screen. 23 minutes and 42 seconds is the time code for this episode. Um, there's going to be a picture in picture version. It'll be down in the description. And yeah, let's just jump right in. Radio, going to give it a three, two, one. Three, two, one. One, go. Back in for another episode. Opening still bangs. I'm a stocking enjoy, I think. Raiders of the Nasal Dark. Okay. <laughs> this one isn't going to be discussing at all then. Mm -hmm. What's the trend? Okay. Or is the fed picking your nose? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> More pudding or cake or something. Stop fingering your nose. Great. Doesn't that mean you're eating, uh, snot? <laughs> uh, you gave him AIDS. Is that Oscar? Oscar H. Genius. Great. Oh, of course. <laughs> Edroy. Right. Oh, 
Uh, this seems like a cult. <laughs> Great, awesome. Where everybody's just picking their noses. Isn't it concerning that the same thing you're picking out of your nose is the sweets? <laughs> you're not going to have to ask her twice. Great. It's all right. Where's the joke? Please tell me they're on each other's nostrils. Yeah, great. <laughs> All right. Good joke. Sucks. Great. What is the bit here? It's it, this is insane. <laughs> Oh, hello. Some Stay Puff Marshmallow Man about this. Booger Ghost. <laughs> It is. It's, it's kind of horrific. S stop. <laughs> to go to the moon. <laughs> okay, that was gross. I'm sorry. My holes will get all baggy. Great. Well, okay, that's all right. I was going to say, is that his snot? Because it wouldn't work. But I'm collecting your boogers is worse. Sick dodge. <laughs> the animation's really fun. Yeah, that's yeah, that's great. It's gonna be a layup.
Yeah, this is super fun. I wonder who animated this. No. I can't believe Panny's dead. Oh, it's got like a bit of a Majora's ma Mask Moon going on. If I can learn to speak again. Majora's Mask Moon. <laughs> One in each nostril. Well, it's not... It's not nougat. It was snot. All right, I want to see him blow up, please. <laughs> okay, you're weird. All right. Goodbye. Oh, stocking's stuck on the moon. Oh, yeah, the moon's going to sneeze. Great. Okay, that's... Yeah, I agree. I'm covered in moon nose cum. Stop. All right, great. <laughs> uh. It's always the gross stuff, man. <laughs> oh. Yes. Little Tokyo. Hmm, of course, yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is great. These character designs. No, you gotta work harder, my man. <laughs> of course. That's why I have the talk with um in like a open office. The character design is here like super funny. I can't think what they remind me of. Yeah, awkward. Thank <laughs> you. 
these character designs. Oh, he heard you. Oh, no. Yeah, good job bullying the old man. Bro, this Tokyo is so, like, gross. Am I still watching Penny and Stocking? I'm like, sorry I haven't been talking. I'm just kind of like into this. Oh, great. <laughs> I mean, I agree. <laughs> ah this guy's like Spamton I like that this is just like a segment of the town Uh, turtle? So there was the little piece of paper for a ghost, right? So I'm wondering what's this coming off of him. What's wrong with the turtle? The turtle's cool. I mean, yeah. Imagine getting a present and crying. Yeah, great. You guys are awesome. This is insane. This is what it, this is what I um this is some of the stuff I love about uh this show. Just goes off on random tangents. Uh, I've got more important shit to do. Yeah, great. Yeah, I mean, I'm like 50. Where's... We're about ready for the joke, right?
Yeah, drink it all, bro. That'll work. Oh, it's coming out of his nose. Yeah, you should go, like, get in the car or something. Great. Well, I wasn't there for that. I was fucking smashed out of the party. Oh no. See that ghost shit on him. Oh, here comes the vomit. I forgot it was called vomit. <laughs> this is awesome. I might actually have to look up some production stuff on this. Get up the old A and N. I mean, now that there's like a monster on the loose, that's like a pretty good excuse. Or oh, panty and or stocking is here. Oh, this is great. We kind of changed the changed the perspective. <laughs> Trio of excrements. Goodbye, vomit monster. <laughs> Great. One coin. <laughs> it sucks to be this guy. <laughs> it's tough being famous. Yep. Oh, at least he got his her autograph or their autographs. That's something. That's nice. Okay. Decent ending? How's things going at work? On <laughs> the turtle on the wall. Oh, well, they kept the turtle around. <laughs> that was very strange, but I, I really enjoyed it. That was awesome. It's like very smart, very uh, very writerly to kind of change the perspective that drastically. Like, because Panion's talking essentially superheroes, right? 
So put us in the shoes of a regular citizen that just gets stuffed over by all these things that we find funny. Like we would find like the vomit monster funny, like in a different skit. But here it's like terrible. It's like the worst day of this guy's life. And yeah, I'm definitely going to look up um, who made that or some of the key stuff anyway. Because it doesn't remind me of something, but I'm unsure. Anyway, that's it, I think. All right, cool. Time to jump in for a little bit of analysis. Rightio, I guess I'll just start with this because I have it up now. The episode could be a reference to the Powerpuff Girls episode Town and Out, which had the girls moving into a much more realistic city. Okay, that's something. The episode's art shift has been compared to the styles of both Satoshi Kon and Studio 4 Degrees Celsius, something like that. Uh, I I thought Satoshi Kon as well when um when I saw it initially, but I didn't want to be uh I didn't want to just jump to that. In reality, the episode was referencing something much more obscure, Shinya Ohiro's episode of Hakenden, which angered many fans as the result of its ugly, realistic aesthetics and loose style. This reaction mirrored the ones that fans had while watching Osamu Kobayashi's episode of Gurren Lagann, episode four. And this episode could be seen as an attempt to recreate that reaction. So the episode was storyboarded, directed, key animated, and the setting were all thought of by, uh, who is it? Osamu Kobayashi. So that's interesting. What else has he directed? Okay. He's done an episode of Dororo. The episode we spoke about of Gurren Lagann. He did a fairly, not a very large chunk of Naruto. He did a bit of Shippuden, about three episodes towards the end of its run. Paradise Kiss, he was the director of. I have no idea what that is. Interesting. Seems to be a bit of an industry vet, which is good. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2021, so rest in peace. But uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a, it's definitely striking style, isn't it? It's not a place where I thought this show would go. This is way more like other slot stuff that I'm talking about at the moment. But yeah, it's really cool. That was awesome. So I'll just pop that up on screen now. And as always, I'm just going to go through and pause it when there's stuff to talk about, really. So here we have Raiders of the Nasal Dark, which now that I'm looking at it, of course, it's an Indiana Jones reference to Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, so <laughs> so we've kind of got a snot-based skit and a vomit-based skit, both very different, but uh, they're definitely keeping up the whole gross-out thing, which, uh, you know, it is what it is. I didn't know the show was like this, but I guess it is, and that's okay too. So there's a new trend around town, and that is picking your nose, uh, and much like the cakes last episode, I think it was, kind of, it's, the trend has enveloped the town. It's kind of, you could you could squint and say it's something regarding consumerism, or, or, or the, the people behind trends, and how they try to push them, and this kind of thing, uh, and how stupid they are. And how people can profit off that and do nefarious things. But anyway, that's probably going a little bit far for Panty and Stocking. But yeah, mostly it's very stupid. So because it's Panty and Stocking, you also have a part where Panny's kind of picking her nose. And then it's like she's fingering her nose. And, you know, they get a lot of joke mileage out of that as well. Uh, stocking seems unmoved by, by the trend, initially anyway. Instead, she's obsessed with this cake or dessert or something, which looks suspiciously like the snot. Yeah, sparkling queen nougat. I wonder where they get it from. Yeah, she she pulls it out of her nose. Like we're going there. It's gross. We're we're eating snot. And yeah, it seems like his little ghost uh, detector thing seems to actually work because it detects something off of a uh, off of this piece of snot. So Brief kind of has that going for him, but of course they're not going to listen to him because he's Brief. So so Panny picks a nose, it goes towards Stocking, Stocking blows it in the direction of, uh, what's this guy's name? Uh, Oscar H. Genius, I think it is. And it causes him to sneeze, and he never sneezes unless it's angels involved. <gasps> so that's a little clue there. But yeah, this guy's pretty funny. I like him uh, as, as a parody. Kind of got this rich boy, rich family, like, conglomerate thing going on, which I think is quite good. Just looks like an asshole. The voice really sells it as well. It's nice. And of course, Penny and Stocking Android, at least initially, anyway. 
What erotic names. Yeah, okay. <laughs> this guy's scum. And just looking at the background, I love the attention to detail that like everybody has their, their kind of finger in their nostril. And he floats the general populace up to his like airship to the moon, which is very cultish. I like it. And they have a big fancy party where everyone's in, you know, fancy attire. And they eat snot cake thing whilst picking their noses. Steve and Stocking's in on the act now. Uh, Oscar asks to see Panty in his special room and, you know... Panty doesn't need more than a little invitation, put it that way. Then we get this elaborate sequence, which, I don't know, it's pretty funny. It's obvious that it's a fake-out joke, and even what they're doing during the fake-out joke is also really disgusting. Let me just... Yeah, see, see, this is what they're doing. They're not, they're not having the sex. They're picking the noses, which is obviously better. Look at this. It's downright depraved. Then here's kind of the reveal. Only one kind of booger can irritate my nasal passage, that of an angel. This, lo- this look on Panty's great. Like, huh? What happened? <laughs> Fuck Chu. I missed that one. That's pretty good. Then he turns into a giant booger blimp and uses the booger power to propel himself. You know, as you do. It appears to be a ghost made of from boogers all around the world. Is it the ghost of someone who died from too many boogers? It's the ghost of a man who slipped on a booger and died. Like, I, I'm not sure it's important, guys. The idea of somebody slipping on a booger and dying is pretty funny. So yeah, everybody's kind of addicted to picking their noses to the point that all the moisture in their body is becoming boogers. So that's gross. And then they're picking their nasal cavity so much that gets that dry that it's now starting to bleed. And then everyone bleeds from the nose so much that it propels them towards the moon into space because he wants to go see the moon. I don't know. Either way, like, who who comes up with this? Like, you need to be put in, like, a home somewhere. (laughs) Insane premise. Very funny. I love it. It's very good. This is one of the grossest parts of the episode, so Stocking has a notice bleed. Panny kind of holds Stocking's nose shut to not let the blood come out to propel the ship. And then she, like, swallows it. It's pretty gross. So then the premise changes. We need to get Panny's boogers, because Panny's boogers have the angel thing, and that can be given to the blimp to make him sneeze and send us crashing back down to Earth. The problem is, Panny doesn't have any boogers left. Oh no, what are we to do? Turns out the Brief had been collecting a bunch of the boogers, which is also really gross. So, this is like, as I've said a number of times, pretty disgusting. And then when I saw the next skit was titled Vomiting Something, I'm like, oh god, no. I could not do this if it was for vomit. Because boogers, boogers are boogers, right? But vomit is just gross. Nobody likes vomit. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy we went in the direction we did for the next skit anyway. All this animation for the action scene in this skit is very cool. I might just have a little look to see if I can find anything about it. So yeah, this episode is scripted, directed, and storyboarded by Shin Itagaki, uh, who seems to be best known for a number of different shows where he's chief director, such as uh, uh, I'm a Spider, So What? He's done a lot of work on Gurren Lagann, including these specials, it seems like. Uh, he directed Black Cat. I don't know what that is. Basquatch. I know what Bento is. He directed that. Okay. But uh, but yeah, the connection there to this seems to be Gurren Lagann. He's also directed the second opening of Bakemonogatari, which would be the Hachikuji opening, which kind of fits with this uh, animation style he's got going on in this sequence. But again, just kind of seems like an industry vet. Again, they're just kind of bringing these people in to work on this stupid little show, this stupid little gross-out show. So, I don't know, it works for me anyway. Uh, yeah, this uh, this animation here is really awesome. Very fun. Fun was the word I used to describe it. It's a part here where Panny has no panties on, and that causes uh, the nosebleeds to increase tenfold and send them propelling into space even further, which is great. Love that. They got a bit of a Majora's Mask moon going on. Um, I don't know what particular this is a reference to, but again, he wants to go to the moon for some reason. I don't know. He wants to take his company to the moon? 
again, we 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 can squint and infer a bunch of stuff, but you know. So each of them kind of shove a booger up his nose, an angel booger, to send him crashing back down to Earth. Stocking kind of laments getting rid of the nougat, even at this point, which is, again, gross. Then, unfortunately, Stocking gets shot up into the sky even further by the booger, which sends her to the moon. And then the moon kind of, like, snot ejaculates her out, which is super duper gross. To which Pandy says, hey, which holes feel best for you? And that's it. Uh, really gross. But pretty creative as well. Some nice fun animation. It's a good one. A good skit. So on A&N and stuff, it's kind of separated into episodes. And each of the episodes is one of these skits. So did one of these skits like air separately, if that makes any sense? Or did they air back to back? Because this seems kind of like more of a collection, right? Of the 25 skits. Anyway, it doesn't really matter, but it's just interesting to think about. Yep. Then we have Vomiting Point. Again, now that I've kind of spoken my piece on the staff, it makes a lot more sense. Again, kind of the conceit of this part of the story is... Well, this part of the story, I say. It's not really a story, is it? It's kind of a purposeful change of pace, a change of perspective that mirrors both the art style and the location and everything else, really. Uh that kind of separates our heroes from the everyday person, right? Again, I, I lamented that this part of the episode is really sad, which is, again, a great departure from the rest of the show, which is wacky and funny. Kind of shows the actual human side to all these tragedies that are happening. But he again, kind of does it for like an ironic reason, right? It's meant to be like, well, this is happening every time you see one of these skits now. Some Somebody's having the worst day of their lives. Right, just extremely interesting. Not something I would expect from Panny and Stocking. I don't even know how much I really want to say about it. Like the art style difference is one of the main things, right? I was gonna say in particular, it reminds me of what I've seen of Paranoia Agent, which is um, which is a Satoshi Kon joint as well. I think I'll I'll just skip through randomly and show random scenes and stuff just so we get a little bit of variety in the visual. But everything in this part is just so disgusting. But it's not a funny kind of disgusting. It's not a gross out kind of disgusting. It's very real, very human kind of disgusting. They say it's Tokyo, but it feels a lot grimier than that. It feels almost cyberpunk, you know. I know there's there's grimy parts of Tokyo, right? It's not all just the tourist attractions. But um But here it's definitely amped up for a for an effect, right? Again, I don't really know what to say about it. It's kind of bummed me out a little bit. Because now I'm going to be thinking about that every single time one of these kind of skits is happening. Like somebody's, again, having the worst day of their lives. Like everybody is just mean to this guy. He's having a bad time at work. Everybody's just younger than him. He seems past it. Uh, nobody includes him in any of the conversations. They both feel sorry for him, but also want him to go away. Uh, the only person that's seemingly nice to him is uh, his daughter, Chi, I think her name is. Um he lives in a pretty quaint little house, watches the TV alone at night, starring Panny and Stalking, which is a bit funny. And I, I think part of it is like how important these superheroes, these celebrities are to our lives, right? How much the littlest act from somebody can kind of change the regular person's day. And is that fair? Is that something that should happen? Like, no, nothing's fair in this world, but like this kind of inequality, right? I don't know, it's, again, not expecting out of Penny and Stocking, right? Uh, just from a plot perspective, so he needs to buy presents for both uh, his co-worker and his daughter for her birthday coming up. He buys the co-worker a present with it's a giant turtle antique thing. And, it, like, it's a bad present, right? You No, don't get that for somebody. But you're crying at that present? Like, I don't know about that. And again, then he gets forced to drink on their kind of drinking party thing, and... Uh, vomit ensues. It's kind of on the night of the daughter's like birthday party as well, and she was looking forward to it so much. And when he's like blacked out, drunk, he sees like her blow out the candles. Let me just bring it up. Yeah, like this is the most tragic thing I've ever seen in my life. And again, this skit is slightly longer than the other one. Yeah, it is by a few minutes. And just kind of you forget you're watching Penny and Stocking. You know, you kind of get immersed in it. It's probably my favorite skit so far. 
just for how different it is, right? I like it from a meta perspective, like changing the perspective of the show, kind of demonstrating the real effect of what's going on. But I also just think it's a great story. Like, this guy's just down on his luck, and then he drinks too much, and then he throws up everywhere and creates a vomit monster. Again, that sounds like funny, right? But it's heartbreaking. There's a particular shot here I'll bring up. That's when I really wanted to look who directed it. Oh yeah, anyway, he's also got a ghost inside of him. That's why he vomits everywhere. I forgot to mention that, I think. But it's this one here. Just the movement here is kind of nuts. So still on twos. So that kind of liquid animation was nuts, right? This, uh, I don't know why, it reminds me of uh, Yuasa a little bit too. It reminds me of uh, Japan Sinks. Don't know why, but it does. Just in the kind of the character design and the movement of the water like that. Yeah, Penny and Stocking kind of show up, save the day. But that's not important. That's not what we're focused on. We we keep the focus pretty solely on uh, on old, uh, what's his name? Ter Terao? Terao son, I think they call him instead of on our main characters. And they give him an autograph for his daughter that is obsessed with Penny and Stocking, because as they are the superheroes slash celebrities of this town. So yeah, again, such a, just from, from the very outset, just such a grimy Tokyo. I think they call it Little Tokyo in Daten City, but we know what we're talking about, right? And this is kind of our finishing shot. They give him the autograph, he gives it to the daughter. This is presumably sometime in the future. Does he get little photos of them as well? I think that's the case. Or stickers or something to that effect. So nothing else has changed. Like, they still live in the same house. They're still, you know, struggling, helping their... I think it's the family grandmother that lives with them as well. And uh, he's still having trouble at work, but the only thing that's changed is, uh, is this autograph. And for some reason, that just makes everything better. It could be seen as quite cynical, but also, like, really happy. You could take it two ways, I think. Again, very interesting. I don't think we're going to move on from that now. But yeah, that was downright fascinating. Uh, we're going to hop into the next episode now. But uh, but I might need to take a little break just after that after that skit. That was a that was a lot. Radio got episode six up here ready to go. Uh, I'm just going to jump right in. I think the time code on this is 23 minutes and 42 seconds. Uh, let me pop that up on screen. And radio, just give it a three, two, one. Three, two, one, go. Ooh. Sorry for rubbing my eyes as well. I'm just a little bit irritated at the moment, a little bit dry. As always, it's a bop. So kind of after that last skit, I wonder where we're going now. Probably just back to the antics, right? I, I mean, it's a reference to something that I don't know. <laughs> it's French, I think. Oh, okay, we're already done. Got one. Yep. He dead. Oh, they're not getting any heavens for all these kills. <laughs> well, there's no money. <laughs> it's not even any fun. <laughs> Got one. I mean, it seems pretty, um, pretty docile. No, yeah, it's going down the toilet. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, throw toilets at it. Just kind of this like tiny little annoying like scrap ghost. 
Are they covered in shit? Okay, losers. Oh, there's a new school queen. Great. The general populace is so, like, dumb. Yes, please explain. Daemon Sisters. <laughs> the Mayor's Daughters. Okay. All the fun stuff. Yeah, you can't do it. Here they are. Great. Is it like the, the, the devil versions of themselves? Yeah, great. Oh, not really, but you know. <laughs> you bondage fetishists. Yeah, get him stalking. Okay. Hmm. You seem normal. <laughs> Who are you? Oh, and they're like sleeping. That's great. Well, I mean, they did, but also they don't care. Authority, huh? They have to walk on a red carpet everywhere. That's great, too. Toilet wash your sister. The way they say... I can't roll my R's, but you know. Oh, they're getting mad. <laughs> I mean, they are very violent. That is also true. Oh, the laugh. That's great. That was a million years ago. Oh yeah, the mayor's like that Bolden guy. Oh no, no, that was the police commissioner. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean conditions? We're just going to beat you up. Well, I mean, they're probably superior, but also, like, you guys suck.
<laughs> oh yeah, yeah, you know, all the stuff that's, you know, important. Yeah, because they're, you know, stupid. Did you say did you say lineage? How is that your fault? Get out of here. Sixty ninth rank. Why well, don't give a fuck about your rule? All right, bye. Oh, and they're running the PR too. Look at them. See, we're built different. Oh, this is very um. Well, it's a lot of shows. It's Assassination Classroom. It's um, uh, Irumakun. It's a lot of stuff. <laughs> We're down with all the with the bad class. That guy in the back looks like he's forty eight. With the loser geeks, great. Oh, with the ghost? I forgot about the ghost. Oh, of course. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, definitely listen to it again. Don't just blow its brains out. Okay, that's important. We need that. Do you actually? <laughs> yeah, jump down like this dirty toilet. She was like looking at the camera there too. Great. To be continued, Ayo. Does that mean, excuse me? Yeah, this is kind of a two-parter. It seems like. <laughs> and they don't clean up brief. That's great. Yeah, that's a little bit weird. We need to destroy the ghost plant. <laughs> oh, of course. Oh, so that's why they were killing so many of the same ghosts at the start. Okay. I'm referring to these two. <laughs> great. The way they roll their ass is great. It does seem pretty criminal like. Oh, of course, yeah. It's kind of snoring whenever they're explaining anything. Great. It's the it's the first time in a while we got an actual sequence, maybe. Cool to see where they're still doing the uh, magical girl thing. I 
I get the feeling this isn't going to work. <laughs> what is it? Scanty and knee socks. Oh, great. They get there in sequence. Oh, this song's sick. <laughs> well, yeah, they had like the red skin. Damn, switching sides like that. Some demons. <laughs> uh. Oh, I mean, it is. Literally. What do you do with half a coin? Anyway. Oh, jeweled in class. <laughs> King Chuck. Or Evil Chuck. Why <laughs> sniff it again? Brief, you're in a little bit of strife here, mate. Oh, my six submachine gun made of two pairs of my underwear. Yeah, get out of here, geek boy. Oh, she's sick. She's Darth Maul. <laughs> Great. Toilet fight. Curve the bullet. Oh god, it caused the singularity. Is that their car? Yeah, great. The animation on that going up the stairs was actually sick. Seeing what um Penny and Stocking can do as a show with a full like twenty four minute episode as well, it's pretty cool. Great. I love the thicker outlines. <laughs> They're evenly matched. He's going to get smushed between two cars. <laughs> Give her a swirly.
Geeku Boy. Geek Boy with the assist. Oh, this is cool. That's like CG. It's like there are kill the kill CG. It's actually pretty good. <laughs> like for an action scene. I no longer have the stone, brother. Oh. Sniper panty. A final showdown at the top of the burning school. Music's really good, by the way. Geek boy. Nope. Based. Multiple singularities? Oh. I'm sick. Stocking just played uh, Pong. What the hell? That's great. I like this, um, this setup they got. No, I needed that. I needed my demon orb. Guy's been peeing for like a full like five minutes. Do these people at school ever get any like work done? <laughs> we'll see you next time. I'm happy these characters are coming back. That's fun. Kind of their, like, demon counterparts. No. Everything is destroyed. Oh, that flag. Kind of the Japanese flag, like, in the American flag. Ha <laughs> He he didn't pick up. You blew your shot. That's crazy. Yep. Is this like a we'll be back? <gasps> Is this the mayor? <laughs> I like this. This is very uh, comic book. Or well, Saturday morning cartoon as well. <sighs> that nut job got a belt. I mean, you're right, but. 
teasing what's to come. Look at this guy. Great. Wonderful. Again, this is a bob. I've said it so many times. Right here. That's it. Just going to hop in for a quick bit of analysis. This one might be particularly short, I think, because I'm running out of time. But we'll see. Yeah, that was a great little skit. Loved it. I thought in particular it was interesting to see what they did with the longer runtime. And they've kind of introduced, well, two, but namely three more characters for us to uh, kind of stick our teeth into. Kind of this mirrored version of Panny and Stocking uh, that will be returning... It's not it's not very villain of the week. This is going to be the main villain, I think. Which is fun. Uh they're very they're like mirror opposites of uh Panty and Stocking. What were their names? Uh Scanty and, and Knee Socks, something like that. That's great. Um they've got obviously got the demon red skin thing going on. It's cool too. And kind of their main tenants at the moment seem to be kind of authority, order mass production, all these kind of things. Which is interesting in the wake of some of the uh, stuff and themes in something like Kill the Kill. So I thought the connection there between the creative stuff, obviously, and then they went on to make something like that. There's something there, I think. Um, and I wish I was a little bit smarter that I could uh, actually actualize it a little bit more. But yeah, just going to pop that up on screen. And as always, just going to go through the episode and pause on the stuff I want to pause on. I don't think this will be too long, though, because I'm running out of time. This episode is called Les Diaboliques, which is a reference to something French that I'm not quite getting, uh, but that's okay. Let me look it up. Let me see if I can grab something. Seemingly is a reference to a 1950s uh, French thriller horror film. It seems to be pretty well regarded. Murders his wife and mistress. His body is dumped in a neglected swimming pool, but the corpse is nowhere to be found when the pool is drained. Is he really dead? Okay, nothing there to really grab. But yeah, psychological horror, huh? They certainly like their uh, <laughs> their references, the stuff that's way more classy than what they're making. Anyway. So we start off and a bunch of these dudes are getting exploded. Uh, we learn later that they're the mass-produced kind of demons out of the factory below the school. Penny and Stocking kind of corner this little, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, like piss ant um, uh, demon, threatened to kill him. Uh, but then he runs away down a toilet, which is another clue because, yeah, you know, you run down the toilet to go to the factory again, right? That's where they were coming out of the toilet as well. So Panny and Stocking kind of do an all-nighter at school looking for this particular demon because they think it might have some currency to it. We later learn it's worth half a coin. So they were right, I guess. But yeah, they're covered in, in you know, poo water. <laughs> and uh, on their way to school, but the school is very different. So the school's kind of got this strict uniform policy as opposed to the free uniform that it was before. You could wear whatever you wanted kind of abandoning kind of this high school American aesthetic for a bit more of a preppy school. Which again, associating that with demonic stuff is a bit loaded, but you know. That's because there is two new queens in town, Scanty and Knee Socks. And here they are, they're kind of... At first I thought that would be kind of very personality mirrors for the two girls as well. Like, one would really like sweets and the other would really like sex or something. But uh, but that's incorrect. They've got different things going on. I'm looking at their eyes now. The eyes are, like, really cool. Yeah, very thick outlines as well. Kind of got some horns going on. Glasses on the other one. I'm a, I'm a glasses fan. Yeah, cool designs. 
So a lot of this episode is just uh, these two, the the kind of Damon sisters, kind of speaking, rolling their R's a lot, doing that kind of thing. The conceit being that they're kind of intellectually outclassing these two, if that makes any sense, with the support of everybody around them, because they have everybody kind of tied around their finger in a way. Now that I'm thinking about it, there's the scenes later where uh, both the boys and the girls are in the toilets, and that's when they're allowed to speak about kind of these depraved stuff, the stuff that these two wouldn't allow. There's something there, I think. They maybe have to go to the toilets to escape their vision, to be themselves. I don't know. Something there. I love how over it Penny and Stocking are in this episode as well. Like, they just cannot be, like, give a shit about them speaking about anything they're speaking about. I love how ambivalent our main characters are to the story that they're participating in. I also like that the school's coming back as a setting. I think it's where they've uh, done some of their best comedy work uh, regarding uh, kind of popularity clicks at school and trends and that kind of stuff. Good satire. There's a nice little subversion in this scene where these two are kind of talking, you know, loudly to kind of anger the two. And you see Panty getting like really mad, right? She's going to snap. And then when they say something about stocking being fat, stocking's the one that, that snaps immediately. It's like, it was only that one time. Like, come on. This was great as well, this little design change on Penny and Stocking. As they keep uh as they keep like questioning it. So they're like, yo, you wanna fight, you wanna fight? It's like, oh well, how will we fight? And they're like, what do you mean? They're just confused at the prospect. Yeah, so then they again directly compare the two with the with uh with the Damon sisters. To which uh, the crowd, well, obviously influenced crowd, uh, chooses the sisters every single time. They should choose like a like a cake eating contest or a sex having contest. I think that uh, that our main two may win. They kind of run a bit of a PR campaign against Penny and Stocking as well, which is uh, again a little bit loaded but fun. So they end up in the geek class with a with a bunch of just weirdos. Let me see if I can find some. Yeah, like this guy. This, like, Star Wars loser. It's like Cat Ears Star Wars. Great. This, like, camera creep that looks like he's 86 years old. Yeah, they're down here with the with the real scum of the earth. I said it reminded me a lot of, uh, you know, Assassination Classroom. Like, a part of the whole premise is that they're, they're the worst class and they get the worst facilities. Same with, uh, with Iramakun, uh, if you've seen that. Same premise, essentially. So I thought we might have done something there with bringing these disparate weirdos together to take down the popular, you know, establishment of the school or something to that effect. But uh, not really. We went for something else entirely, which is cool. Yeah, we kind of see this demon we saw in the start, leads them down the toilet, and voila, there's a uh, ghost factory. Yeah, it's a ghost stone that has absorbed human wickedness for a millennia. Yeah, right. Okay. And yeah, we find out that the two sisters are demons, which surprises nobody. <laughs> or at least shouldn't. We get a kind of our full magical girl sequence that we haven't seen in a while. Maybe not the full version, but you know. Again, it's 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 used to mirror the two, right? Because they have their sequence right. And then the two sisters have their own the two demon sisters, I should say, kind of have their own sequence as well. Again, there's somewhere somewhere that has probably watched this scene too many times. It won't be me for the record, but um I get it. This ghost uh, that's kind of been with us most of the episode kind of uh, switches sides immediately, which is fun, and then gets destroyed immediately, which is also fun. It's uh, it's like, oh yeah, he's important, he's important, he's important, this little like, Casper motherfucker, and just gets squashed. So they go to go to scrap, they're about to scrap these uh, our four characters there, then they're like, well, we just need to grab the ghost stone. It's like, what, what ghost stone? It's like, oh shit, it's already gone. Ah! great and chuck's got it and then evil chuck is like beating him up good stuff it ends up in the hands of brief who smells it smells bad then goes in to smell it again because he's not very smart uh and our chase sequence begins oh probably the most elaborate action sequence we've seen in the show they fight all throughout the school it's pretty well animated they got a bit of the kill the kill cg in there as well which i always enjoy um pretty dynamic sequence some great music plays throughout as well um and yeah it's great to see the scope kind of expand with this kind of two-part story i wonder if we're going to see more of these if that makes any sense 
this one seems the first like real plot's the wrong word permanent the first real permanent episode of of uh of penny and stocking in the past i've kind of praised their ability to tell a coherent plot in 10 minutes and they kind of you know given more room to breathe tell a pretty compelling story as well like these two are pretty cool characters i i hope they stick around the old the old demon sisters so i could go through and show you all the shots but a lot of what these two characters here are doing kind of scanty and panty uh a lot of mirrored mirrored stuff. They'll they'll show one animation with scanty, then the same animation with panty, kind of demonstrating their similarities. Then the same thing with uh, stocking and uh, knee sock in the car. It's kind of what they're doing there as well. The car sequence was probably one of my favorites. I like how uh, brief helps uh, kind of kick the car up and help squash the other one. Kind of ends in you know pretty epic climactic sequence they're standing atop of the school there's rubble everywhere and uh and they're kind of like we're just gonna kill the the dude and steal the stone and then they're like not on our watch and then they shoot each other and then the whole bullets reflect and do the pong thing it's pretty pretty cool stuff again nice conceit for an action sequence i didn't really expect it out of this show they could stop being gross out and be cool sometimes i think not that gross out isn't cool but you catch my drift uh, the stone is destroyed in, in this sequence. They shoot it out of the air, much to the dismay of uh, of the two demon sisters. A fire rises out of the ground. Uh, very well animated fire, I must say. Again, great great production on this episode. And there's some kind of signal here that they'll be back, which is nice. I like that. I hope they're back. They're, they're very fun characters. I'll be cheering when they come back for sure. And yeah, we see the kind of <laughs> rubble of the school left. Our heroes, I guess. Our heroes, ladies and gentlemen, they saved the day. Except everything's destroyed. Uh, they've got the Japanese-American flag up there as well, which is a nice touch, especially for the Americanized uh, school they got going on. It's just as confused as kind of the, you know, location of the city itself. And we get our first real big teaser for, I'm guessing, the main villain, which seems to be the mayor of the town. Um, I thought we saw the mayor before, but that was the police chief, I guess. Um, and yeah. It'd be interesting to see where this goes. I've got no rule indicated other than he seems that he has a like a cone head. So just kind of in summary, I like that they kind of combined the two segments. I was a little bit worried initially that it was only going to be one and then they would have to wrap it up very quickly. They chose the right uh, the right idea here. It helps because they only have one thing to talk about as well. Uh, well animated, well produced, as it always is. Pretty genuinely funny as well. And... Uh, Kind of got some continuation going on with it. We're going to see these characters again, supposedly, and uh, and I'm going to be happy when we do. And with that, I think we're going to wrap up for today. Uh, these were two very good episodes. Uh, kind of the first two skits in uh, in episode five were pretty insane. Uh, one was extremely gross, and then the other one was a complete like genre shift that I've probably gone over in too much detail. Uh, then the second one's way more of a straightforward... Again, it felt like a Saturday morning cartoon, right? Um, that's kind of the vibe they're going for. Again, very cool. <laughs> I, I enjoyed the two episodes this week, like, a lot. Did a lot for the show, I think. Gonna, gonna be looking forward to next week. Just before I head out of here, just, uh, gonna do my show stuff quickly. If you like the video, like the video. If you like the video and want to see more, uh, subscribe to the channel. Comment below anything you thought about the episode, anything I can do to improve my presentation, or anything else you want in, just anything, really. Uh, comment below. And I'm doing follow for follow on Twitter, so follow me on Twitter if you want to get in on uh, any of that action. Uh, either way, thank you very much for watching, and uh, I'll catch you next week for more Penny and Stocking. Radio. Catch you guys later.